drive from Melbourne, I've reached the bottom of the Mornington Peninsula and a famous local landmark. Hi, Prue. Hi, Lee. Can you show me the lighthouse? Oh, yes. Come inside our lovely limestone building. Let's go. Excited. Never been in a lighthouse before. Lighthouse keeper Prue Shear is passionate about Cape Shank and happy to shed some light on its amazing history. Here we are, we're 13 metres above the ground and the beam is actually 100 metres above sea level when it shines out to sea and that actually determines the height of the lighthouse. They originally weren't whale and burnt whale and mutton bird oil inside the lens, then they moved over to kerosene and then electricity in 1940. Today we've got batteries that are permanently recharged through mains power electricity and uh, that gives us about 14 hours up our sleeve when we still lose power on a regular basis down here. Venture outside and you're amazed by 360 degree views that until recently were only enjoyed by lighthouse keepers like Prue. There's something just a little bit romantic and dramatic about high cliffs, shipwreck tales and lighthouses. These days, the cottages the lighthouse keepers called home have been given a new lease on life. There are two three-bedroomed cottages perfect for families and two smaller ones more suitable for couples. All four have a warm and cosy home-style feel about them. We've uh, restored them back to their correct age and era. Injected and some love into it. Yep, and we've <laughs> opened up the doors to the public so the lighthouse tours are uh, every day of the year. It's a great place to base yourself for the rest of the exploration on the Mornington Peninsula. I'm going to take Prue's advice and get out and explore. There are some great local food places, which means I can whip up a snack after all my touring around. How many different types of potatoes have you got? We've got nine different varieties. Yep. And um, we're trialling another one at the moment. There's nothing quite like picking your own veggies. And at Hawks Farm, Richard Hawks is showing this city girl how to get my hands dirty. Got a beetroot recipe. Yep. And I need lots of beetroot. So let's get us a good bunch. Yep. Making a bruschetta. Buying direct from the farmer is good for so many reasons, mainly because it's fresh Next stop, Main Ridge Dairy for some goat's cheese. Everything we have here is um, from paddock to plate, I guess you could say. Bess and the team at Main Ridge Dairy have their work cut out for them, milking over 200 goats every day. They like a nibble, don't they? Oh, my God. They're tactile. That's how they test things. Hello? They taste things. <laughs> and she's trying to chew the camera. <laughs> I'm surrounded. What have we got here? This is a range of the cheeses we produce on the farm. We've met the girls, so their milk comes up here and then um, that's where we make the cheese. Oh. We do cheese making workshops, so people come in, and but they make the cheese in here because it's not really how you would do it at home if you made it out the back. I mean, that's a well set up factory that's, you know, sterile and all those sorts of things, or sanitised. Mm -hmm. Whereas your home kitchen's not like that. So we do it out here and we do it with the same things you would use at home. Thank you so much, Prue, for showing me the lighthouse. It was absolutely wonderful. So I'm just going to throw together a bruschetta. Really easy. I've got oven roasted beetroot already. And quite simply, just going to add a couple of things to it. Prue, it just doesn't get any better than this. Cooking with this view to die for, with produce that I've picked from today, from this local area. Oh, let's have it here. Oh, thank you. Let's give oh, this a yum. taste. Yum. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. How is it? Very nice. 